Welcome to Umqua Aquaculture. You're about to learn the secrets to our legendary quality and gain insight as to the reasons for the exquisite flavor of our Oregon-grown oysters. Got a minute? We'll give you the grand tour. It is widely known in oyster circles that farm location plays the key role in the cultivation of exquisite tasting oysters. In our minds, there is not a better place on earth than right here. The water found in the Umpqua Triangle is very special. Fresh, clean Oregon rainwater blends with the Pacific Ocean in just the right proportions at this exclusive location. The Japanese current caresses the Oregon coast with vast amounts of seawater at just the right temperature. At the 80% saltwater to 20% freshwater blend found here, the growing conditions are ideal, producing clean, firm, slightly salty tasting oyster meat. The water temperature remains at about 51 degrees year-round in our protected growing area. That's important because when oysters get warm, they spawn. Spawning oysters develop an unappetizing, slightly grainy texture. Here, under consistently cool growing conditions, our oysters never spawn. They are delicious year-round. Growing delicious oysters is a process that takes time, up to four years. We'll show you how we do it, however, in just a few minutes. Oyster farming begins with a few million fresh oyster seeds. The seeds are oyster larvae, only two weeks old, grown in a hatchery further up the Oregon coast. They are delivered overnight at about 40 degrees, which helps to keep them dormant for the trip. Three million seeds arrive as a lump about the size of a golf ball. The lump is roughly divided between three containers. No need to count them. They are dispersed in buckets of cool water. Warmer water is then added to reanimate the oyster seeds. This is done incrementally to bring the new seed up to the proper incubation temperature of 80 degrees. Food grade incubation tanks are filled with water pumped, then warmed, from the Umpqua estuary at high tide. Inside the tanks are nets filled with empty, recycled oyster shells. The new seed is added to the tank. The incubation water is rich in algae and phytoplankton. Air bubbles are used to keep the seeds and food in suspension. It is the algae and phytoplankton that produces the foam you see here and on the beach at the waterline. For about two days, the seeds will swim free, then permanently attach themselves to the shells with an adhesive they excrete. After the young oysters are attached, the temperature of the incubation tank is gradually lowered to match the temperature of the bay. The young oysters, now called spat, are moved in their nets to the triangular breakwater in the bay, also known as the triangle, to grow. After a month or so in the triangle, the nets of recycled oyster shells with baby oysters attached are raised and returned to the processing center. Individual shells, each now carrying from 15 to 20 young oysters, are inserted at intervals between the cords of a 15-foot length of rope. The young oysters will have plenty of room to grow. These suspended oyster lines form long curtains when returned to the triangle. Each curtain contains nearly two miles of hanging oysters. While we're out in the triangle, we take water samples to be tested later in the lab. The oyster curtains bob up and down with the tide for two to four years in the triangle. And that's another secret to our success. Our oysters never come in contact with the muck at the bottom of the bay. Oysters grown in beds are exposed to air at low tide and mucky sediment when water is present. Most days, each adult oyster will pump seven or more gallons of water through its system. That puts a lot of sediment in their diet if they're lying on a tidal flat. That sediment gives most oysters a very pungent taste. Our oyster curtains suspended in clean, cool water produce clean, firm, pearlescent oyster meat. Their flavor is consistently outstanding year after year. Nothing affects the flavor and color of an oyster more than its habitat. At Umqua Aquaculture, we are setting the standard by which oysters are judged.
Back at the plant, we're cleaning. Meticulous cleanliness is a vital part of our outstanding reputation. Cleaning takes place each and every day. And once a week, the plant undergoes a full day of cleaning every nook and cranny. Up in the lab, we test the water we collected from the triangle. We check once a week for the presence of red tide algae. After the oysters grow for two to four years, they're ready for harvest. We motor out to the custom-made harvest barge to gather the mature oysters. The motorized boom raises the oyster line. Each line in the curtain now weighs about 150 pounds. They are cut free from the float line and placed in totes. As soon as the harvest is brought into the plant, each batch is assigned a tracking letter for quality control. This letter designation will follow each batch from start to finish. Ice is used to keep the oysters at about 33 degrees from the beginning of processing through delivery. The next stop in the plant is the sorting area. The inspector removes the live oysters from the old recycled shells with an air hammer and breakdown knife. By tapping on the shell, the inspector can tell if the live oyster is tightly sealed. Sealed oysters last longer and stay fresher. They become shell stock oysters. Shell stock oysters are cleaned and sold in the shell in sizes jumbo, medium, small, and extra small. If the inspector hears a hollow sound when he taps, it indicates the shell is not tightly closed. Special knives are used to quickly shuck these oysters. Watch closely as they shuck. Our shuckers are fast, but they also take great care to assure the meat goes undamaged. Once in a great while, they will find a pearl, but it's of such poor quality, it's worthless. Different species of oysters are grown for their pearls, but our oysters are grown only for flavor. These shucked oysters are cleaned, sorted, and packaged, always at near freezing temperature, and are ready to market. Shucked oysters are sorted as large, medium, small, and yearling. Used shells that aren't recycled to grow more oysters are stored in a pile outside of the plant. Among other things, oyster shells have been used to build roads and paths, as fill for lowlands, and as a source of lime. Oysters, as you know, are delicious, but they are also very nutritious. They are high in omega-3 fatty acids and low in cholesterol. They have high mineral content, phosphorus, iodine, and zinc. The shells containing nacre, the material from which pearls are formed, are also ground and used as a dietary calcium supplement. Oysters were revered by the Romans, Daniel Webster, and Casanova. It is reported that Casanova ate 50 oysters while taking his morning bath. They were fed to the Union troops stationed near the sea, and we can only imagine their importance to Anthony and Cleopatra. It has been written that a person without a taste for oysters may well be without a soul. We wouldn't go that far, but Umpqua aquaculture oysters are sought after by renowned chefs and, of course, by everyday connoisseurs of the good life. There you have it, the entire process by which Umpqua Triangle Oysters find their way to market. Ask for them wherever you are. Umpqua Aquaculture Oysters, sweet, healthy morsels, rich in flavor, clean in taste.